the Tar Heels add one more to their 2022 recruiting class. This is the Coast to Coast Podcast on InsideCarolina.com, brought to you by Johnny T-Shirt. What's good, everybody? It's Joey Powell joining you once again from InsideCarolina.com on the Coast to Coast Podcast, special edition, because we got news to talk about. With me, as always, the fellows that bring the thunder, uh, that bring the lightning, that basically create the storm of information that we provide to you, the listeners and Inside Carolina subscribers out there, Sean Moran, Sherell McMillan. Sherell, how are you? Doing well, Joey. Appreciate you asking. Sean, how you living? Doing well. Well, today we got a we got a money podcast for you. We're gonna um, we're gonna throw some some change at the screen. We're gonna get some uh, get some dollars and some cents because Tyler Nickel is a Tar Heel. Shrill, uh, just the the vitals on Tyler Nickel: six eight two ten out of Elton, Virginia. Um, number 75, according to 27, uh, 24, seven sports, that's his rating. Trell, tell us a little bit about how Hubert Davis and the staff were able to land Tyler Nichols commitment. Well, I think it has to start, um, you know, as soon as Hubert Davis got the job, they certainly looked for a certain type of player. Um, there was a prioritization of shooting and scoring and nickel does, um, both of those abundantly well. So as UNC um, started to narrow down who they were really interested on the wing, uh, Nickel was one of those guys. However, um, and I should say Steve Robinson, a former UNC assistant coach, uh, is from the area nearby where um, Nickel is from. So he had already done some contact when he was on staff at Carolina. So there's some bridge between the two staffs. Um, But really, you know, it's difficult during a pandemic to really understand how good of a player someone is until you can kind of see him live and in person. And so I think that's why UNC initially held off on offering him. So they, they started contacting him in May um, and it got pretty serious towards the end of May. He had, was looking to set up an official visit, but UNC wanted to watch him play. And so they saw him during the first uh, scholastic period in June. And when they saw him, he was terrific. They had all four coaches there. So Jeff Lebo, Brad Frederick, Sean May, and Hebert Davis, the entire staff saw him one Sunday morning. And then he put up 34 points, hit four threes, just kind of did everything. It gets a really good school um, out of Charlotte Independence. Uh, so after they saw that performance, he got an offer the next day. And there was some thought that he might try to visit that week um, before the dead period started. They ended up, they wanted to wait until the fall. Now, I think a part of that is, you know, they wanted to see what else was out there as far as wings. Um, and eventually it led to an offer to Cam Whitmore. So it became a situation where Nickel and Whitmore were kind of the two options they had on the wing. And I think, you know, they gave Whitmore some time. And once they decided that, you know, they wanted to go in a different direction, you know, they prioritized, prioritized Nickel, um, especially over the last, I would say, three weeks. And his official visit uh, last weekend, I think, kind of sealed the deal. Yeah, Sean, give us kind of the, the once over. I know you spend so much time breaking down film of these guys. Um, you know, I, I think some of the things that have been said about him, obviously he has good range for, you know, for a 6'8 kid. Um, from what I've seen, he loves to kind of get his shot after moving left, moving to his left. Um, seems like he's a pretty good, you know, pretty good at drawing contact and going through that contact for a bigger guy. But but give uh, Tar Heel fans and South Carolina subscribers – Give us kind of the high level, the once over of, of what Tyler Nichols game really means. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if you need me. I think you hit it, hit it on the head uh, in terms of the. <laughs> Sorry, I was, try, the... I was trying to do the um, I was trying to do the uh, the distilled, very easy to understand version and let you come out and be the the expert no. that you are. No, I, no I, I mean, I think you hit on the key areas. So, you know, right now you kind of see the six, seven, six, eight size as well as strength. I think, you know, one of the first words anybody uses to describe him is, is tough in terms of how, how he plays and, and his mentality, um, which I think is, is kind of a, a great word for anybody to hear about a upcoming recruit. Um, you know, from an offensive standpoint, he plays in kind of a smaller level in Virginia, but has already kind of set the scoring, scoring records, I, I believe, through the first three years um, and has, has put on quite a show um you know very lethal from the outside um that's where he was most comfortable with uh most comfortable from in high school slash aau um you mentioned kind of going to the left he loves kind of a hesitation pull up um loves shooting from the left side of the floor can shoot um you know once again i think we always talk about it now but definite nba range um in terms of 
you know, size and strength, he has that. So he can, he can draw contact. He likes contact. He can post up smaller defenders and he has some, some good footwork on his, on his kind of fadeaways from, from mid range. Um, he can attack the basket, but in terms of, you know, maybe uh, beating defenders off the dribble based on his quickness is probably not going to, not going to happen at, at this stage of the game. Um, so that's probably where he needs the most improvement is just kind of the, the foot speed and, and maybe the creativity um, and dribbling, you know, dribbling moves. But at the same time with that size and the shooting ability, um, you know, you probably don't need a whole lot, especially as you're getting, getting acclimated. Um, I think the, the question will be, uh, you know, offensively, is he, uh, do they have him at the three or is, is he now kind of a small ball four um, that you can, you can really play? I think defensively, once again, that's going to also be a question of, you know, maybe defensively he slots in against the small ball fours. Can he guard kind of the quicker wings? I think will be the question. So, um, you know, I think he, he, he had a very strong uh, season for Adidas uh, this past summer going against top competition. I, I still would have, you know, didn't get to see him in person and still would like to watch a little more film on him. Uh, but at the same time, he's a guy that can, that can shoot, that can score and is a very, very tough competitor. What we see a lot in these guys, you know, just in their kind of the quick write-ups you read about them, is that defense can potentially be their their downfall. Uh, do you feel like that's the same case here with Tyler, or do you feel like it's something that can be improved? Yeah, I mean, I think it could definitely definitely be improved. Once again, I think it depends on on the position. Um, I think right now scoring is is kind of where his his mindset is at. You know, crashing the boards, uh, he can get out in transition. Um, and he can definitely guard on the wing. So, uh, you know, that that's not a, a huge deficiency. But once again, I think when we're talking, you know, was hopefully going to be a team, you know, especially, you know, once again, I think we've talked about it with this recruiting class is um, for the most part, they should be in school for for several years, which I think is, is important um, unless you're talking about that, you know, rare one and done type player that can come in and, and contribute. So, you should be able to see him progress. And with that, I think, you know, once he gets into the, the training program, probably a little lighter on his feet. And, and then he's a guy that can easily toggle um, between those positions. So I definitely think it's an area that he can, that he can work on. And once again, I think he's already, he, he prefers to play on the wing right now. So um, it's not like that's, that's foreign to him by any means. That's awesome. I appreciate you kind of, again, following, <laughs> following my, my lead again I, I feel like I'm coming at this from the from where most listeners are but you bring the you bring the insight and the the in-depth detail uh Sherelle, how do you feel like he fits personality wise with the other guys and again we've had them all on on this pod uh, rather recently but how do you think Tyler Nickel fits in personality wise and then how do you think he also fits in with the uh w- with the group from a, a talent perspective um or, or maybe a roster fit perspective I would say personality wise, he is a little bit different um, than the other three commits. Um, he is, I don't say this lightly, he is one of the most confident recruits I've ever talked to since we've been doing this. Wow. Um, and that comes through in every conversation. I mean, I can tell you how many times I've texted, you know, sent Ben a text and said, man, this kid is super confident. Sent Sean a text or a group message that said, man, I love this kid's confidence um, because, you know, he doesn't get frazzled. He, you know, he's the type where they say, oh, you know, if he make, misses 10 shots, he's going to take make sure he takes the 11th because uh, he knows it's going in. So he's that type of kid. And he's also very intense on the court. Um, and I think you need that. I think you need a balance on every team. You don't want to have, you know, you don't want 12 Jerry Stackhouses on a team. You know, let's put it that way. But you also don't want 12 guys who aren't going to, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, talk to you. don't want 12 guys also who aren't going to get in each other's face if needed. So I think this class has a good balance of that. And I think overall UNC's roster um, has a good balance of that. So personality wise, he'll fit in because he's serious about basketball. It is his number one priority. He's made no bones about that since the beginning. He's talked about the NBA. He's talked about development. Um, so I think he'll fit in perfectly because, you know, a, a lot of people have called him a basketball junkie. That's what some folks around him um, have called him. And, you know, if you're a basketball junkie, is there a better place to be in North Carolina sometimes during the summer when there's so many pros coming through and it's just pickup game after pickup game. So I think he'll fit in from that aspect Um, on the court. I think he is a compliment to the other pieces that they've gotten in the class because from the outset, they wanted a scoring wing, you know, whether or not 
we think they need one or if they're we think there's a glut at that position that's that's kind of irrelevant because that's they've sought one since yeah. Hubert davis became yeah. the coach and what i like about uh nickel is that yes there is um a, a lack of athleticism relatively and i say that because if you're playing at unc you're athletic like yeah. there's nobody playing in the acc who's really not athletic but relative to that he has already developed counters and ways of creating separation through footwork and kind of you know off balance shots and those kind of things um to mitigate that and i think as he gets stronger and faster and more experienced um he'll be able to do that in acc as well if you watch some of his summer, summer performances, I think team final was an informative because he could do some things, but you know, again, you're going against the length of someone like Derek Lively of someone like uh, Jalen Duran, you know, guys who are going to be in the NBA in a year. Um, so you can see where he's at right now, which was solid, you know, it wasn't great, but it was solid. <clears throat> so I think that's instructive. Um, but you know, he can shoot. Um, as Sean said, you know, ball handling is still a thing that I think he wants to improve on, but this isn't a, a skinny, you know, six, seven, six, eight kid. He's well built. Um, he's ready to, I think, you know, contribute right away. I think he'll be one who maybe might surprise uh, just because um, his skill set is, is pretty advanced when it comes to scoring. So, and then he has the mentality as well. Um, you know, I was, I went and saw Corwin Walton work out as we've talked about in August. And when I see guys who are confident and who work hard, it's just hard to bet against them, no matter what they're ranked. So um, that's kind of how I feel about him is, is that he has a chance to make an impact. I love your, uh, I love your reference. You know, you called him a basketball junkie because when you tell about an 18 year old who's already developed counters in his game, I think that screams basketball junkie. And I think that's something our listeners and, and viewers, anybody checking us out on YouTube, uh, should probably appreciate and, and kind of go ahead and file that away in the, in the old memory bank. Sean, I want to come back to you. Um, when do you see a guy like Tyler Nickel contributing? I realize, and I realize it's a bit of a nebulous question because it depends on who's on the roster, you know, when he gets to town. But if all things, you know, all things equal, do, is he a kid that immediately jumps in and gets some playing time as a freshman? Is he a kid that, you know, it's probably his junior year before he's starting? And then kind of on the back of that, what do you see his ceiling being at UNC? Uh, great question. I mean, I think once again, when you're talking about recruits in this, in this range, so say, you know, 75, uh, to a hundred, you're talking about a guy that, you know, percentage base is not going to come in and, and set the world on fire as a freshman. Um, but perhaps he can come in and, and offer some solid minutes off the bench and kind of start to get, get experience. And then, you know, kind of as a, as a sophomore, junior, senior, you're kind of continuing to, to go up the, up the ramp. Um, so, you know, once again, I think the goal would be freshman, you know, and Sherelle, Sherelle said he thinks he, you know, maybe he can uh, surpass uh, the rankings expectations because that certainly, certainly does happen. Um, but I, I would look at it more as a kind of a, almost like a Kenny Williams type progression um, in terms of the, the four years and, and think, you know, starter level is definitely where where you would expect uh expect him as kind of an upper upper classman um or at least somebody that is uh is offering extremely strong minutes off the bench um and i think once again he provides kind of a a different skill set than some of the other six seven six eight guys that they that they have on the team right now and that should be in chapel hill when when he gets there and uh, you know, you, you talk about shooting and I was actually kind of reading a, a Twitter thread on this the other day, but it, you know, the, the comment was, it seems that great shooters, it hasn't really caught up in terms of national ranking and Kerwin Walton was kind of an example of that. Um, and when you look at nickel, uh, you know, Synergy had recorded around two, uh, over 250 possessions from from Adidas of him, and he was ranked in the 93rd percentile um, when it came to spot up shooting. Um, so, you know, 1.2 points per possession. Um, That's pretty when we were going when we were, when we were going through the UNC team this last year, you weren't getting a lot of uh, excellence or, or really above above average uh, when it came to spot up shooting last year. So, you know, once again, that was something that Kerwin had, and I think we talked about his lack of athleticism, but here he was kind of lighting up all the synergy numbers and the percentages and, um, you know, Nichols 
Nichols chart doesn't look exactly like Kerwin's, but just the, the shooting area definitely stands out from a uh, staff perspective. Well, and yeah, something and else, we've, we've, I, learned that we, we've learned that Coach Davis likes a shooter. Go ahead, Sherelle. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I want to jump in, too, because I think, um, and I'm a victim of it, too, sometimes we just get caught too caught up in measurables. And I'm not saying that measurables aren't important, so don't get me wrong. Like, but it's the yes, easiest thing to gravitate it, toward as, as, right, as a fan. Yeah, Right, as a fan. And, and even, even I'm not, I'm not just going to put on fans, even analysts. It's just, if you see a guy come down and do a ferocious dunk, you know, which, which Nickel can do. I think people need to remember that he can do that. But if you see that, if you see the athleticism, it's just much easier to say, okay, that kid's going to be a player. Some of the more uh, smaller, intricate type deal things, the footwork, the movement, the spacing is maybe a little harder for see, not just for fans, for anyone who watches basketball. It's just hard to see. Um, And I think uh, we need to recondition ourselves for a player like Nickel and stop worrying about, I'm not just saying this because he committed to Carolina, but stop worrying about, um, positions and athleticism and fit it's like can the dude play basketball yeah you know it goes back to sean talking about hubert davis's interview the first day he was uh he became head coach like can he shoot can he shoot can he shoot and nickel can shoot and above all that he just he plays basketball and i think if you have someone who loves basketball and has a skill that is somewhat elite as sean said in the 93rd percentile you can figure out the rest. Yeah. It, you know, you can prop up any deficiencies. So that, that's kind of how I'm looking at You can surround him with things that can cover those deficiencies right. up. That's a great right. point. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, so I think that's where that's where I'm at with, with players like Nick. I know, you know, the elephant in the room, some fans don't think Carolina should be signing players in the 70s or, or players in the hundreds or whatever. And I think it's it's time to recondition ourselves to think about each individual player as an individual case as opposed to, well, the number 83 player the last 12 years has started an average of blah, blah, blah. You know, think about Kenny Williams. Uh, Kenny Williams when did Kenny Williams, Williams when, did he, when did he start? When did Kenny Williams start as a player? Right. Uh, well, as I a mean, sophomore. It right, was because well, Theo Pinson got hurt, but it, but as a sophomore. But he plugged in. But I'm also thinking about Kerwin Walton. Where was right. he rated last year? Right, right, like, right. Where does, where does UNC go without a kid that, again, has some longer-term aspirations of wanting to be in Chapel Hill is there more than one and done, which we've talked about here on this show before, is how does the staff adapt to not just the one and done or what may soon be a none and done, but these other alternatives to college that are going to start eating away at these top 100 players. And, again, you're getting a kid that's 75. No, he's not five-star. He's probably not going to make the McDonald's game. But to, to your point, Sherelle, he can shoot. He's got some dog in him. You would want him on the court, you know, at the end of a game. Uh, I think that's that's all stuff that, that fans can probably appreciate. Maybe not today as we're recording this on the heels of his commitment, but should be happy about it in the future and, and should feel confident about uh, his potential contributions down the line. Guys, I do have um, something I do think uh, Tyler Nickel will probably need to investigate as soon as he gets on campus, and that's Johnny T-shirt. Um, it's, you know – we can talk about his game and we can talk about um, any sorts of, of of weaknesses or, you know, subpar parts of his skill set that need to be refined. But you can never, ever be more uh, than a five-star player unless you're going to Johnny T-shirt. You're going to Johnny T-shirt, you're getting gear, you're five-star. You're walking out the door, you're absolutely All-American status, parade All-American, you're minted. You're, How- you're Howard Garfinkel in gear when you walk out of Johnny T-Shirt. Hit him up at johnnytshirt.com or on East Franklin Street. If you've been popping back into town for Carolina football, uh, you know, go by. Uh, basketball will be here very soon. I saw it announced uh, about uh, they're going to have Late Night with HD featuring our man BDOT. You're going to need some gear. Go to johnnytshirt.com. Johnny T-Shirt, inside Carolina premium subscribers. No, you get that dime off the top. Well, we're talking about a nickel. Why not use your dime? Use your 10%. Use it at Johnny T-Shirt. Don't roll your eyes, Shirley. You know that was a great, great segue. Uh, JohnnyT-Shirt.com. We appreciate their support. We're going to appreciate you guys supporting them, returning the favor. Thanks to those folks. All right, before we get out of here, uh, we're going to have another episode of the Coast to Coast very soon talking about this class as a collective and then talking about moving on to 2023 because Tyler Nichols is the last one on the board. So, fellas, before we get out of here, uh, last thoughts on this commitment or anything that you want to tease for our next episode for our listeners? Sean, you got five pennies or even two pennies? Oh, I mean, I think it'll be interesting. You know, once again, I think Cam Whitmore is definitely the uh, the sexier of, of players, especially when it comes to athleticism. But um, you know, once again, Nickel can put the 
can put the ball in the basket. So I, I think it is going to be interesting once they do get into college, just kind of track, you know, Nickel versus Whitmer, Whitmore, but also uh, Justin Taylor from Syracuse as well, just to kind of see, you know, see the comparison of how those those players do. Um, and I You're think not trying to make an Omar Cook and Adam Boone situation here, are you? I hope not. <laughs> okay. All right. Carry on. Um, but, um, you know, in, in general, once again, that's a, another, another recruit that in, initially they wanted to watch in person, but they, they focused in and, and offered him in, in June. And, and here we are. And I think that's been, we said it a few times is in the past, uh, you know, they were kind of locked on a specific recruit. And then, you know, after a drawn out recruitment, uh, re, you know, they went, went a different direction. So this coaching staff has proven, you know, Hey, we're, we're not going to be, you know, scrambling at the end. Um, so they've, they've locked in, uh, but once again, they've started to kind of shift their focus to 2023. And I think, you know, with that, you'll probably see obviously the different, different positions that can complement uh, this, this first class. Shrill, anything else you want to, you want to throw out here for a parting shot before we get out? Yeah, I think we'll talk about this on the next one, but just the strategy that Hubert Davis and his staff used uh, with this 2022 class is very, very interesting. Um, very similar to what Sean said. Just, um, I don't want to spoil it. We'll, we'll talk about it on the next Coast to Coast. But we learned a lot. Right. Uh, we learned a lot about how he approaches things. And to Sean's point, I think um, there are times that Carolina, you know, could have had a, a Tyler Nickel um as opposed to a, a Cam Whitmore, but they would have waited for Cam Whitmore until December or January or February. And then Tyler Nickel would have already been committed to Virginia Tech. And then they would have had to kind of scramble in the spring to put a roster together. And I think what you see with Hubert Davis is you have an offer, you've, you've got you know an allotted amount of time that he's gonna give you and then he's moving on. And yeah. I think that is refreshing. And I think it's, um, you know, it's kind of what you have to do now. Kind of seems like it's playing well, at least with UNC's target so far. I, for one, cannot wait until Tyler gets to Chapel Hill. He's on the court. And he's just playing great and makes a phenomenal pass for an assist. That way we can all say there's a dime from a nickel because, y'all, that makes sense. <laughs> yes. All right, boys, I appreciate you being here, as always, bringing the heat uh, for a, a special edition commitment pod of the Coast to Coast. Sean Moran, Sherelle McMillan, you guys are fabulous. I'm just Joey Powell. I appreciate y'all being here. Appreciate our listeners. Remember, rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. We appreciate it. We will catch you next time on this episode. I should have just skipped the show. I went too far. We'll catch you next time on another edition of the Coast to Coast podcast on InSouthCarolina.com. Late. That's all, folks. <laughs> well done. All right. <laughs>